Another question from Alex uh, Bowen, or a super chat from Alex. And uh, this is certainly one that I have to thread a, a thread a needle on because okay. I would never advocate for the shifting and changing of people's job roles within Blizzard. Okay. And the reason why is, um, I mean, one of the reasons why, I mean, you know, it, it, it obviously you know, can be can be rude. And if yeah. you do that when you have a public platform, it yeah. can also be really quite irresponsible. Yeah. Uh, but also, it's because people are figureheads, and that does not actually mean that they are making all of the decisions that are going on. Yeah. Um, and it's very, very important. It's, it's very... You know, why things that we want to happen don't happen is just multifactorial and I think generally can't be pinned in a single person. Yeah, so that being said, basically Alex's question is um, that, okay, I'd say the premise of Alex's question is that uh, the, the current leadership of World of Warcraft is very focused on the Mythic Plus, uh, the Mythic rating, a lot of those very gamey things, right? Yeah. The systems and stuff like that. Um, and Alex would say, or does say, that uh, there doesn't seem like there's an institutional like of cosmetic stuff, non-power stuff, and evergreen content within the team. Uh, and would advocate for a change in leadership to uh, people who would have a, maybe a, a different perspective yes. or came from a different place, whatever. Mm. To, so what I would say to that is it's multifactorial. So with the person who sort of leads a game like yeah you know the buck stops with the leader that yeah. that is how it works but that said uh, it's a bloody hard job mm. i mean i cannot imagine what it would be like being at the top of a team as large as the world of warcraft team be a nightmare for sure um and i think the thing here is uh now i i do think that and i've said this publicly before so i'm, I'm happy enough to say it i think the team is a, too systemic focused yeah that's not really what i enjoy as a player so i'm probably a bit closer to alex here mm. um but i think a bunch of those systemic things are things that blizzard feel they need to get because yeah. if they don't the expansion won't happen mm. right it's like you need to get your raids and your dungeons and all of the systems to make those work or else there won't be uh, an expansion for what well, they've used a very core feature set mm. and i think what that means is that a bunch of those things that so many of us love, that so many of us think really, you know, really uh, add so much texture and character and richness to the world, those are often nice to haves. Yeah. And, you know, whenever the quest team can put those in, those nice little character moments, it, you know, really where it can work and be successful. But in a situation where it's like, okay, cosmetic stuff non-player power stuff that's cool evergreen content like uh deaths of chromie great to have but those artists have got to make the dungeons yeah. they've got to make the tile sets for our new zones they've got to start working on the next patch and the next expansion and the and i i think that is one of those things where I really wish that the leadership uh, in World of Warcraft would be able to come together and just mm. take it easy for an expansion and really yeah. lay off the systems and do an expansion that is way less systemically risky. I think that Legion was systemically risky, but it paid off. BFA was systemically risky, and it did not pay off in a very damaging way. Shadowlands was systemically very risky and also did not pay off. I do not yeah. feel that Covenants paid off. I just feel they did a lot less damage than the systems of BFA to, to that expansion. Yeah, the systematic focus is something of a one-hit wonder so far. It's a one-hit wonder and trying to repeat the lightning in the bottle of Legion, yeah. I think has led them horrendously astray. Yeah. Um, so I really wish that they would move away from that mm. systemic stuff, try to keep it a bit more simple and really focus into the content. Uh, yeah. It seems to be that they have an issue getting enough content out and I think it does not matter who is the figurehead, mm. uh, you know, if there is not the capacity to make the stuff, then the stuff won't be made. Yeah. I mean, this is a Blizzard that is struggling to make enough armor sets yeah. to keep players happy, yeah, even though they like... obviously could do that in the past Yeah. and still have a pretty aggressive patch cycle. Mm. So it's, it's that thing where 
it's it's really hard when it's a large team. You really can't pin it just in one person, but I think it is easy to pin it in one person, especially when, you know, when a WoW Q&A happens, mm -hmm. it's Ian and Josh Yeah. back when they did those. But that would always mean that, you know, Ian would get up and he would explain the philosophy behind Blizzard's decisions. Yeah. And, you know, for me, that would actually always be something of sitting down being like, this is actually really interesting. Yeah, Getting sure. in a conversation or imagine like, you know, Ian going on a three hour podcast uh, be great. and just shooting the shit awesome. about that design stuff. That'd be really great. Be awesome. I love um, it. But I think what's happened is that in so many of those Q&As, there was, you know, points of major player criticism that he had to address yeah. by explaining Blizzard's philosophy. Mm -hmm. And I think what happened there is he explained their philosophy and generally did a really good job of explaining the, that philosophy. Yeah. But to a lot of players, they were like, okay, you've explained that fair enough, but it still feels bad to me as a customer, yeah. as a player, right? The experience isn't, isn't working. Um, and I think that means that a lot of stuff can get pinned on one man. Yeah, he's, uh, he's... In the same way that whenever stuff was not right with the game in the past, yeah. it would be pinned in Ghostcrawler. Yeah. Or, you know, when the lore... Uh, is silly during uh, the Burning Crusade. It gets pinned in medicine. Yeah. Uh, so it's, it's the sort of thing where I think the most productive way to do things is to just focus on the issues and stuff and mm. try to build bridges where we can um, rather than to focus too much on, on, on people and stuff like that. <clears throat> yeah. I, basically, there is no one man that can, or, or woman, or whatever, it's a turn of speech. No speech. There's no one person who can go in there and just, you know, I, I mean, save wow i don't mean it like that but yeah. there's no one person who can go in there and make all of the changes happen because mm. this is blizzard it's a big ship and big ships aren't agile it takes a long time for them to steer and turn and everything is is planned and all that so, so carefully and you know it actually could be the case you know to this question that ian may actually love cosmetic stuff non-power mm. stuff and evergreen content and it might actually be the not having enough of that stuff in the game is his one big bugbear yeah. because you know he was game director for legion and legion had lots of cosmetic content. stuff uh lot you know suramar mm -hmm. had all of that stuff which would then make me think well the one expansion that i think he was like the first one he was the game director for fully mm, yeah. actually did really well on cosmetics and you know, I, I obviously have systems criticisms of Legion yeah. that are pretty, pretty big and yep. foundational. But as somebody who liked getting my cosmetics and stuff, like Legion was pretty cool for all that. Mm -hmm. um, so then it's like, if when they cut an expansion in half and actually had enough time, they did all of those things pretty well. Well, now, if they're not doing those things as well... Uh, does that maybe mean that there's issues with resources and stuff like that? Mm. Now, I would come in and say that Shadowlands actually is full of cool cosmetics. It is, yeah. That's My cool. issue is that they've all been put into the homogenous anima grind, mm -hmm. which, you know, it's the sort of thing where I, I just don't think that was a great way to do it. It's yeah. not the way they did it in the past. Yeah. Uh, but it's also the case where a world where I am getting all of those cosmetics in a way that's not homogenized into anima is also a world where the factions of this expansion are way more robust like the factions of old and yeah. there are more mini game things to do like the withered training and you know etc 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 so maybe well i mean that, that, that's basically it right this is not an expansion that has got a lot of content in it yeah and i think so if they did not have time to make that content then of course we're in a situation where all of our nice to have things are just thrown on anima and you know call it a day. Yeah. Yeah. It's 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 interesting. I think that's completely agreeable in the sense that I don't think that's a problem of, you know, it's not like there's a list of stuff and it's like game director pick three of these and you know, at the minute Ian picks the ones that he personally wants because he's game director, if you assume he's doing a professional job, which he, I mean, he is, he's the director for the game, he's been on the team for ages, he's probably, he's gonna to want to do what he thinks, what he believes is best, which is likely a decent pick of things, but it's probably the case where instead of going, hello, we have the capacity to pick three of five, it's like, we have, we really have the capacity to pick one, and he has yeah. to make the difficult call, which I think, 
if it's an organizational problem, it needs an organizational solution. Yeah. And I was thinking there while you were talking. I think there's there's maybe a world where World of Warcraft, instead of being a game with a game director, has a game with is a game that is so big and so many games that it has a console that it like of directors who will speak for individual like yeah. elements that they need or advocates for like official advocates for specific content types just to try and enforce that balance where possible i think that may be like a vague solution to the problem but that's it's not a person problem it's an organizational problem i think and it's not like <laughs> like you say it's, it's not like it's a dislike from certain members of the team on specific content it's an institutional ability to implement them or an institutional yeah. institutional focus or will tax to do that and that comes from everybody in the chain because i mean <laughs> it it's only ever a terrible place to work if like there's no actual decision making or guidance made from anyone in like the bottom 90 percent of the chain like there's so many seniors and principal staff that make these calls every day it's yeah it's just it can't be it, it, can, it can't be pinned on one person although by definition it sort of has to be because that's 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 where the where the buck stops technically yeah. speaking so it's like when he's speaking about things he's the one who explains blizzard's philosophy not his philosophy blizzard's philosophy the team's philosophy yeah. what they've come, come to get yeah that's his job yeah you know he could end up having a personal disagreement with some of that stuff but his job is to present the mm. overall team consensus in yeah. as robust a way as he can yeah and I'd, like i'd also say Peter Jackson can make a great movie, mm. right? Lord of the Rings, Peter Jackson's King Kong, you know? Um, he can also make Mortal Engines, oh, which kind of sucks. Him? Oh, God. Yeah. And if you look at, say, people who are writers, mm. they could write an incredible script, but then their movie is shot, uh, shot <laughs> by, you know, there's a director and a cinematographer, and then it goes into the editing bay. Mm. And it turns out <laughs> the script that you wrote, that all those actors performed, under the direction of somebody gets another big wave of editing yep. whenever the editor adds it so you can be you know trying your best mm. and it could not go well in the same way you know why did peter jackson's mortal uh, engine kind of suck i mean i don't know why we know the dude can make a great thing was there another factor was there mm. studio bullshit was there funding stuff because we got to remember ian hasacostas is not actually the the top person in world of warcraft yeah. i believe that's jonathan height Bully's executive producer, so it's hard to know because these things kind of shift and wave depending on who's who's involved. But I think, <laughs> I think based on what they've been talking about, I mean, John Hyde's the one who announced the delay. Yeah, and I, like, this is not a way to blast John Hyde yeah, at all. Yeah, yeah, it, it's just that, like, you know, Ian can have all the plans in the world, but ultimately <laughs> he's got to sit down with uh, with his producer and he's got to work out what do we have budget for? Yeah. What can we actually do? Yeah, if John's tapping the watch on his wrist, like, what can he do about it? Just, yeah, nope, no time for that. I mean, even just for, for a personal example with us, mm -hmm. uh, you know, for uh, for game one, we have a mm -hmm. full budget and et cetera, et cetera, worked out for yeah. that. And when we were working that budget out, yeah, things had to be changed and cut and moved around. And that's just naturally what it's like. Yep. Um, you know, there's, there's other people we know that I've seen, you know, them going through their budget and thinking, okay, well, if our characters have got this feature, then it will take this many uh, man hours. And that is going to cost, you know, however many, you know, probably <laughs> many, many, many thousands. Cause you'd be, yeah. you'd be amazed how expensive things like customizations are mm. and so expensive. Uh, especially when it's got to work in multiple character models with different body plans. Real hard to do. Um, and some tough calls have got to be made there. And I think ultimately that leads to the systemic stuff being more efficient in dev time because you're leveraging some gameplay programmers and some designers instead of an entire bloody shed of artists or aircraft <laughs> hangar of artists. Um, I'm not saying that as, you know, defenses or anything like that. Um, uh, you know, I, I actually think the reason why you asked that question is something that I identify with humongously oh, personally. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I wish the yeah. game had more evergreen, non-power cosmetic stuff. Mm -hmm. It's just that there are so many factors at play that it can't really be pinned on, on a single person, yeah. uh, really. Yeah, so I guess a follow-up from what we were just talking about, there's a super chat from Ben Gorgon. 
uh, who says they need a smaller secondary team, one that could focus on a drip feed of evergreen content uh, that will inevitably give X-Pac team breathing room. So I entirely agree with you in principle. Yeah. However, if the expansion is behind schedule and they can redeploy that smaller secondary team to help the expansion, they're probably going to do that. Yeah. And they're also probably going to think about this in terms of opportunity cost, mm -hmm. where we could pay X amount of developers, X amount of money to do a bunch of nice to have content, or we could pay that same amount of money to that same amount of developers to do a bunch of need to have content, or perhaps a bunch of content that will be more marketable, that will be more, you know, big and epic and be more of a box feature. Mm -hmm. So I entirely would love for that to happen, right? For some secondary team that's just there making cool shit, putting secrets in the game, giving us a farm to tend, a player house or whatever. But uh, at the end of the day, dev resources are dev resources. And especially within World of Warcraft, working with the same game, the same engine, the same tools, it would be hard to justify not pulling people onto like the high yeah. prio content.